Hello again, welcome back to my YouTube channel, today we will learn how to create an ocean shader, then we will set up the scene, and then we'll tell you how to create this animation. This tutorial is totally beginners friendly, so anyone can follow along. But first if you are new here, then please subscribe my channel, and if you love my work, and want to support, then you can follow me on Patreon, all patrons will get my version of the blend file for free. Back to Blender. Delete the cube and the lamp from the scene. Shift A, bring in a plane into the scene. S6 to scale the plane 6 Blender units. Now it's time for shading. Go to the shading tab. Click on new. Delete the principled node. Shift A, bring in a glass shader. Connect BSDF to surface. Now bring in a bump node. Connect normal to normal. Next, Shift A. Noise shader. Control T, to bring in mapping and texture coordinate nodes, if you are not able to do it, then you have to go to edit, preferences, add-ons. Search for node wrangler add-on, check it, and now you will be able to do it. I will leave texture coordinates ungenerated. Connect factor to the height input of the bump node. Increase scale to 30. We can see, it started to look like an ocean, but it's nowhere perfect. Decrease the distance value to 0.1. And change the IOR value to 1.333. Now we have something that's looking better, but we will modify it a little bit more for a better result. Duplicate the noise texture. Bring in a mix RGB node. Make some space, then connect both factor outputs to color 1 and 2 on the mix node. Connect color to height. This time decrease the scale to 15. Set mix to multiply. Increase factor to 1. It's looking more better, but I will repeat the same process again. Duplicate both the nodes. Change scale to 20. You can play with the scale values, and you will totally have something of your own. This is it. This is the shader I used to make that final render. It can be used for any sort of stuff, like if you're making a river or a lake, but always remember a glass of water or lakes are calm, so you just have to play with the scale values to achieve that look, you can also play with the color if you want, but I didn't do that. Now it's time to set up an HDRI, I will use an add-in scene skies, you can totally use any HDR of your own choice. You can see our ocean is looking great. But as you can see, the mountain range is quite high, if I place a camera, it will not be able to give a result like an ocean, it will look more like a lake, so I will fix it now. Go back to the shading tab. Select world. Zoom into the mapping node. Change the Z value to 0.05. You can see, our HDR just moved downward a little. I think 0.04 is a more better option. Back to layout. 
Now it's time to set up the camera, choose the best view, that you want for your final render, then Ctrl Alt 0 to place a camera. If you go out of cam view, you can simply press 0 on the number pad to go to your camera view. Adjust your camera a little bit more, first we should adjust some cam settings. Change focal length to 20. In viewpoint display, increase opacity to 1, so we can only see our final result. Change your camera settings, rotate it and move it around, till you find your best result. I tried to match my camera as close to my earlier render, you might have your own result, and it's totally okay. Now we will create some volume, to create a sense of atmosphere. Shift A, Cube. Go to Edit Mode, S6, to scale it up, 6 Blender Units. SZ to scale it down around Z axis. Move it up and then scale it up a little bit. Back to the Shading tab. Back to Object Mode. Select the cube and click on New. Delete the Principled node. Shift A, bring in Principled Volume. Connect volume to volume, but it's too much dense now, reduce its density to 0.005. Even this smaller value can make a sense of atmosphere in the scene. Go to the modeling tab. Select render view, you can see what the volume shader is doing. I will hide the cube. Hiding it, just clears our view and speed up our workflow, it doesn't mean that it will not be in the final render. You can see render is still active, for our cube. Now bring in a sun lamp. Match it to the key source of our light coming from the HDR, this is EV, we have to cheat some of it, even if you do it for cycles, it creates interesting shadows as well. Take it a little bit to the side, because the placement of the sun in the scene doesn't matter, it's only the direction and the angle that matters. Rotate it, and you will find some interesting reflections and result, it's totally up to you. I will take it R from our cam view. Go to light settings, and change the strength to 10. Now the color, I will choose a little warmer color by dragging it towards the yellow a little. In shadow, check contact shadows, I will not talk about it in this video. I can see there is no timeline in the modeling window, you can either go to layout, or drag open another window at the bottom, and switch it to timeline. I will be selecting 170 as my final frame. Select the camera, and press I, select location and rotation. A set of location and rotation keyframes have been created. I will move these keyframes to the end frame. Now I will rotate the camera, so it's facing downward. Yeah something like that, press I again, select location and rotation. So if we press play, you can see we now have our camera animation. But wait a minute, you will say if this is the camera animation, then how we will see our camera flying through the ocean. So now here is the trick. Go to the shading tab. Close the image editor window. And drag open a timeline window. Now zoom into the mapping node. While my timeline is at frame 1, I will press I, on the rotation Z axis of the mapping node. Now go to the end frame of the video, change rotation Z value, from 0 to minus 170. Well if you play it now, you will have an animation of our camera flying through the ocean. I will limit the keyframes, I will start our animation from 45. Yeah it's looking nice. But minus 170 will not be the value for all of you, it totally depends on where you place the camera in the scene. Like if you reduce the value, you will have the effect of our camera moving forward, but if you increase the value, we will see our camera is moving totally in the opposite direction. Let's see, on our last keyframe, if I use a value of 100, 
you will have this effect. But if we use minus 100, it's the same effect like before. But this time, it will be slower. I used minus 170 as my final value earlier, when I made the render. Yeah it's looking good. Now I will talk about the render settings. Check ambient occlusion, check bloom, but I don't like the effect. I will reduce bloom intensity to 0.005. Yeah now it's looking great. Depth of field, to set up depth of field, I will bring in an empty into the scene. Press 7 to go to top view, and set up the empty, where you want your camera to focus at. Now in camera settings, check depth of field, and then select the empty as the focus object. Increase f-stop to 5.2. Blades to 10 and rotation to 45 degrees. Back to render settings. Check screen space reflections. Check motion blur. In volumetrics, change tile size to 4. Check volumetric shadows. Now in shadows, cascade is for sun, we can increase the pixels to get better result, but I am not going to change it because it is working fine. Set cube size to 1024, and check high bit depth. Now color management. Change the look to medium high contrast. These are my final render settings. Even with our volumetric cube off, it is looking good. I added a little bit of camera shake to my camera setup earlier, to add a little bit of realism, I will not be doing that in this video. I didn't stop here, I also used the blender compositor. For that you have to check mist, normal, and all other settings you want to play with, while compositing. I will not be doing compositing in this video because this video already got longer, but you can totally check out this video, in this tutorial, I have talked about how to add mist, ambient occlusion, and talked about some nodes to get you started and color grade your images and footage, right inside Blender. This is all the compositing, I have done to color grade my footage. This is what I had before. And now this is the final render. Well this is all for today. If you like the video, then please like and subscribe, and follow me on Patreon as well. See you in my next video, take care till then, happy blending.